Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today's exciting because I've started to receive some of the new parts that I'm going to be installing into my desktop PC. Now I'm going to show you how to upgrade your processor to a new 12th generation i7, new motherboard, new RAM, and new liquid cooler. The reason we're going to be doing this is we're getting the computer ready to edit H.265 4K files like my Canon R6 records in. So stick around and I'm going to show you how to do all that. guys so we've got all of the PC parts in now we've now got the new liquid cooler motherboard processor and RAM and now we're gonna swap some parts so first order of business is to remove the liquid cooler correct yep and that's uh, that's held in by these four nuts here with this uh, Corsair cooler that you currently have. And this bracket is underneath the motherboard, right? Yeah, we're it's like to... It's like a back bracket that comes through the motherboard and then that's what connects to these studs that you're unscrewing now, right? Correct. We're gonna leave the block there so that way it's not flopping all around the case. Then we'll uh, dismount the uh, radiator and just take it out in one fell swoop. Okay, cool. So the liquid cooler has a radiator on the front here and it's just held on by a few screws. So we remove these screws. That's gonna allow us to remove the radiator that has the fans mounted to the radiator. Yep. Which is really the biggest part of the liquid cooler itself. Hoping that it'll just uh, slide out here. Cause uh, I got it in there, right? It's like working on cars. You want me to move this stuff? So you can get to it? Yeah, if you don't mind. Yeah, not a problem. Alright, so pop the back off. Yep. So right now we're just locating the, what is this, the power to the pump? It's the built-in fan controller for the three fans on the radiator. So a couple of technical difficulties kind of always happens when you're working on a computer, but we had to unplug a couple of wires that were connecting the water block to the motherboard. But once we got those couple of connections disconnected, we're going to be able to lift this block right up off of it. Yep. Also got the fans disconnected as well, because I forgot those were a thing for a minute. There we go. All right, liquid cooler out. So we're gonna have to put the other one in the same way, basically, on an angle. So there's your water block, radiator and fans, super dusty and dirty. Uh, all right, so uh, our next order of business would be to uh, get the graphics card unplugged and uh, taken out. Add-in card here to remove. This is just a USB and USB-C add-in card. Nothing special. Since at this point we are replacing everything else, uh, we're just gonna take out the motherboard. All right, Mobo comes out. Now, luckily, as Vince told me, the stands aren't gonna have to change. Now, those are the little pegs that hold the motherboard up from actually touching the metal of the case, right? Yep. So, we don't have to change those. Like, those were kind of a pain when we originally had to set this computer up. Two 
stupid. There it is. Okay, and we've got the motherboard out, we've got the cooler out, which means the RAM and the processor out with the motherboard as well. Uh, let's get the new motherboard open. I am excited about this motherboard. So we want with the, uh, what is this? The MSI, what was, what was the brand? Of? This is the MSI Z690 Edge Wi-Fi. Mag or MPI or something like that? MPG. MPG. So you need the bracket. Yep. LGA 1700, first one I pulled out. Wow, the thing is sweet. I also like the dragon. The dragon. All right, so here's the bracket. So this goes on the back side. Yep. What was the one thing I said that it needed I stickies? Hate? Yeah. Now they're stickies. They did it. Somebody was listening to my brain. <laughs> so yeah, this basically will line up with the uh, holes in the motherboard here and stick on the back, so that all the hardware can mount to the top. If you don't mind, actually, just hold it up so I can pull these stickers off. All right. And that's just gonna go slide these up. So just like that, you've got it stamped on the back side of the MOBO. Good? Yep. These guys. Okay, so we've got the bracket for the right socket on the back of the motherboard. Yep. So now, do we mount the MOBO? Nope. Uh, we are going to... Uh, get the CPU installed and the RAM, and then we're gonna get uh, get it all on the board first. Yep. So you want the processor? Processor and RAM. 12th generation i7. And the reason we went with that is because we know for a fact that it will be able to handle the H.265 4K files that my Canon R6 records in. And that's really the whole reason that we're upgrading the PC right now is that the eighth generation i7 just wasn't able to handle it. And that was a funny thing that I think is probably worth mentioning to people that are watching this is all of the YouTubers that I watched basically said that only 12th gen could do that. And then when we tested your 11th gen in your laptop, it scrubbed the H.265 4K files fine. Yeah. So Pretty that's good. something to know is that 11th gen will also do it. Or at least it seems to, or for whatever reason was working. We only tested it on a really small little couple of clips, but still, I mean, it was scrubbing it fine. Yeah, you know, that was uh, being worked off with a NVMe drive as well. A lot of people don't realize that they need the super fast read and write speeds from hard drives until they realize they can't do what they need to do and then they find out the hard way. Yeah, <laughs> or they accept the fact that, you know, it's like, oh, this is just gonna take that long. Well, you now you can really cut down you know the time amount it takes by you know having better drives better processors better video cards you know that all counts well i'm telling you when you try to scrub footage that just won't play smoothly it makes like fine editing almost impossible okay so one thing to note is there is an arrow in the corner here that shows you where to put the processor into the socket so the little arrow so this little tiny arrow in this corner is going to signify the corner that needs to match up and there should be an arrow so now the oh, arrow is, the arrow. it's on the plastic clip. Well, son of a Betsy. I thought it was weird that it was way down here. It's usually on the motherboard. So that was kind of crazy. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot too. There, there's also notches on the socket here. Oh, that show you? So if you look here, you have little notches. Oh yeah. And they'll only line up one way. Did the older processors have that too? They did. Okay. Um, I always looked for the triangle. Yeah, the triangle is another way you can do it. But those notches too. Okay, so then that's just gonna seat down. There it goes. Oh, the processor is made to pop it off, huh? I guess so. Weird. Okay, now I've got the processor seated. We're happy with that. RAM? RAM. All right, so this is what, uh, 6,000 megahertz DDR5? Yep, G-Skill Trident Z5 RGB, fancy smancy, randomly accessed memory. There is a notch in this RAM as well to pay attention to when you see them in there, right? Yep, so we're gonna go slots two, Push down evenly and they snap in. Yep. Just 
Yeah. And tick and tick. So now we've got the RAM installed, we've got the processor installed on the motherboard. Motherboard going in now? Yes. Okay. Let's mount the motherboard in. This is always the trickiest part about building a computer, if you ask me, is like getting the motherboard seated in there. We can uh, remount the board here. So put the screws into the stand? Yep, so we're gonna get these guys. Okay, so we've got the motherboard seated in there and now Vince is going to be putting the screws into the actual stand so that the motherboard will be screwed into the case. All right, cool. So motherboard's mounted, and now it's time to do the liquid cooler, right? Radiator, block, three fans. So the way that we set up the computer is we have the radiator on the front of the computer. So what we have it is pulling the cool air into the radiator, so it's going to cool the radiator off with the cool air from outside of the computer. And then we have the fans on the back and the top of the computer exhausting out. So that way the heat naturally flows upwards and then exhausts out of the system. And we're pulling the cool air from outside of the system in through the radiator. So it's a pull and then push system that we use. Okay, so now we have the fans mounted onto the radiator. So now it's going to be time to what mount the radiator in and then we'll have to do some thermal pasting before we mount that on. Mm -hmm. That twists so that the dragon will face the right direction when we mount it in there. Okay, so now we wanna actually mount it. Radiator in. All right, so we're just plugging in SATA cables. We're missing one. We're missing one? Yeah, there it is. The missing cable. There we go. Everything was like literally in the same spot. Good. I know this is actually going kind of smooth so far. Knock on wood. So now we... Uh, Thermal paste? Well, first uh, we need the bracket for the mount for the copper plate here. Okay, so we had to do a little bit of research, aka read the directions, and uh, find which bracket was correct. And as messy as this looks, this is probably the smoothest PC build so far that we've done. Uh, it hasn't been from scratch. That's why it's been smoother. That's why it gets you. So this is gonna slide on fully what the dots are for. That's weird. Okay. Would that be fine like that? Yeah. Or do you want it a different way? How do you want, like... Uh, I guess... Yeah, maybe like... Well, that might hit the... F no, it won't hit the fan. Right? So it's time to thermal paste now, right? Yep. So we apply a little bit of thermal paste. Okay. So he's just using a credit card to smoothly spread the thermal paste across the entire sensor. So you're trying to spread it thin and even is the key here. And again, too thick is a bad thing as well, right? Yeah, you don't really want it to go over the sides or... Too thick would it could insulate the heat, correct? Yep. All right, starting to get a thin coat across the entire sensor now. Okay guys, so after you apply the thermal paste to the processor, you then mount the liquid cooler. Now we actually mounted this off camera, so you didn't see it get mounted on there, but you did previously see Vince mounting this on there before he thermal pasted it. So all we did was mounted this bracket on and then used the hardware to screw it down. You don't want to screw too tightly, correct? Yep. Okay, so after we've applied thermal paste and then we've tightened the hardware down and got the actual thermal cooler on top of the processor, mm -hmm. what's next? At this point, I think everything's pretty much done. We can throw in a graphics card and fire it up and see what happens. 
Okay, so let's throw the graphics card in. Bring in our power connectors. There we go. And okay, now it's time for the moment of truth. Let's see if it boots on. So I hope this tutorial helped you guys a little bit. If it did, go below, subscribe, click the notification bell, and I'll see you on my next video.